San Diego's foothills hold some of the most fascinating forms of cultured and wild plant life found anywhere in the world. Land blessed by a mild climate. With water, almost anything will grow. Subtropical fruits, oranges and lemons and avocados, ornamentals, alfalfa and other forage crops. A land ideal for plant life and as a place for man to live. But large areas still are in the wild state. These tens of thousands of acres of foothills have no water for crops or for large settlements of people. As a result, vast areas are marked chiefly by these tough, brushy kinds of vegetation which can survive the dry conditions. This, then, is the story of the brushlands. Properly managed, they have great resource potential or left in their present state, they remain a continuing threat to life and property through wildfire. People may have one or more interests in mind here, these foothills can be used for recreation, for hiking, hunting, camping, or for just experiencing the open space. Some may look to this land for forage to feed wildlife and livestock. Others may have more interest in the limited water this land can yield. But all have one thought in common. When the vegetation is composed largely of dense, unbroken fields of mature brush, one of the most overriding fears is of the day it will catch fire and burn wildly out of control. A heavy canopy of brush has little use. It is beyond the succulent stage with no feed value for animals. It crowds out grass and other beneficial plants. It steals the little water there is in the soil and it makes conditions even more ripe for fire. Here, inevitably, is that dreaded day. High winds, low humidity, and plenty of fuel to make the biggest wildfire the Southland has ever seen. Smoke builds up over El Cajon, over Alpine and San Diego. And another terrible fire season is underway. Most of us don't need reminding of those days when the Laguna fire that we see here ate its way across miles of dense brush. Day and night it burned wildly out of control. Fire like this requires three things, ignition, oxygen, and fuel. Ignition can and has been reduced through preventive measures, but as a natural phenomenon, lightning for example, ignition cannot be completely eliminated. The least controllable factor is the oxygen, the atmosphere, the air around us. Santa Ana winds moved in plenty of oxygen in this fire, leaving firefighters stymied. The remaining component is fuel. It is in this aspect that we have some measure of control. Eliminate the fuel and there could be no fire. Actually, total clearing of brush is neither desirable nor practical, but reduce the amount of fuel and you have reasonable chance for fire control. Keep this in mind as we see how the flames flare up under gusts of wind, plenty of oxygen, wherever there's fuel yet to burn. In contrast, in Deerhorn Valley, two homes were threatened but did not burn. Why? The fire ran out of fuel because brush had been cleared for safe distances around each house. The conversion of brush land to grassland, wherever practical, is not at odds with the multiple land use interests of people. It certainly does not conflict with the interests of fire suppression crews. 
Low fuel, grassy clearings like these are ideal spots to make stands against runaway fires. Brush is an extravagant user of water, so it's not uncommon when brush is cleared to see natural springs flow again. Yes, increased watershed yield is an added benefit. This view of dry grass surrounded by brush is a man-made clearing, a fuel break. The University of California, the Soil Conservation Service, the California Division of Forestry, the U.S. Forest Service, and the Bureau of Land Management in joint and individual projects have found successful methods for brushland conversion. Experimental ranges, fuel break projects, seedings, and test plots on private ranches all have contributed to finding methods and materials to use. And the San Diego County has formed a Watershed Resources Advisory Commission to coordinate this valuable background experience with available resources. It provides additional proving grounds for more brush fire prevention tools. One method under closer study is mechanical clearing. Effective, but expensive. This is a roller brush cutter. It's one of several machines under test. The wide blades sink deep into the soil, chopping limbs and roots. The brush is dense. It stands high. This is a test of a crusher designed to break up asphalt, but being tried on brush. A serrated brush disc is added to get out roots so they cannot re-sprout. Other equipment also is being tried to do this job even better, such as this brush rake with a cutting bar across the base. It does a clean job and leaves valuable topsoil relatively undisturbed. It's a dusty, dirty job but a necessary one if we are to harness the resource potential of the brushlands and cut fire waste. Behind the brush rake, the tractor leaves a seedbed ready for planting. We have talked about planting with grass as a necessary factor. Test plots, screen grasses, and legumes adaptable to San Diego County. Hundreds of species of grasses and clovers from throughout the world have been planted to find those best suited to replace brush. These are just a few. Not only grasses and clovers, but some woody plants that have feed value, such as this saltbush or atriplex, are being tested. The preferred method of planting is with a grain drill. And, with some luck, large areas can be seeded. In heavier terrain, a rangeland drill adapted to seeding in rocky soil withstands the roughness of some slopes. Pipes and chains cover the seed with a thin layer of soil to assure good germination. In the fall and winter, and especially the following spring, this is the kind of result we can expect to see. Eventually, there will be solid growth of lush grass. Another very important method of clearing out wildfire fuel is by fire itself. Control burns require careful planning and cooperation of all, neighboring ranchers, technicians, farm advisors, and forestry officials. Planning and safety are synonymous. The weather must be taken into account too. The burn is carefully plotted to these ends and to ground conditions that will give the best burn and safest results.
structures and sites for fire control equipment are spotted. Partial mechanical work in advance cuts safe borders for the planned burn. A burning permit must be obtained well in advance from the California Division of Forestry. Adequate notice to you, the public, is a must. Then, with final clearance from fire officials, the men mobilize and move out to their planned positions. Ignition starts only when the weather is right for a safe burn. This may even be a time when it is difficult to start the planned fire, but safety comes first. The smoke rises. All of us want cleaner air, but smoke for short periods is better than that coming from out of control killer wildfires. As heat and intensity build, the fire does burn cleaner with more open flame. This was a good burn. From the steepness and the rocks, it is easy to see why fighting brush with fire is so practical. Just as obvious as the difficult terrain is the problem of seeding it, so we turn to the airplane. Aerial application immediately after the burn lets the seed settle in the fluffy ash. Even distribution of seed on the cool ash bed is essential for a uniform stand of range grass. This site produced an excellent growth of wheat grass. The charred brush eventually will disappear, but one could not hope for a more successful seeding, the result of planting and having seed ready to put on right after the burn. A good rain after planting helped give a good start. Rain before seeding forms a crust over the ash, this prevents seed from settling in. A poor stand will result. So mechanically covering the seed where possible is a help. A ship's anchor chain pulled between two tractors disturbs the soil enough to cover the broadcast seed. At the same time, the chain tears out and crushes the dead brush. This will cause it to decay and disappear more rapidly. The burn doesn't always kill all the plants. This manzanita bush survived the burn, but not the chain. Large trees, however, are spared for shade and beauty. Burning, seeding, covering. These are only part of the job. Regrowth of brush, as in this hillside, is a problem where lack of follow-up work allows it to get started again. It comes back with a few sprouts from a surviving brush crown or as seedlings, such as these. Selective spraying is one way to retard brush regrowth. Oftentimes, several spot sprayings may be necessary before complete control is obtained. Here is a good payoff. All the regrowth brush has been killed. But it does take work. It takes vigilance to protect the effort. Some brush species are saved for browse value. Here, elm brush or mountain mahogany has been kept. It is excellent feed for deer and livestock to graze.
As we mentioned, care is taken to leave large trees for beauty and shade, but brush near and under them must be destroyed so it will not compete for scarce moisture. In good brushland conversion, then, a combination of grass, brush, and trees is selected for each site. Conversions of brush to grass have met with varying degrees of success, but never before have we been better equipped with the know-how and public interest to expand brush clearing beyond the plot and demonstration size to large-scale applications, thousands of acres in size. Naturally, it is not expected that all brushlands be converted to grass, nor is it desirable, even if possible. Each type of landscape has its place in the scheme of things, such as water development for resource use as well as recreation. Or for livestock forage, such as this good stand of wheat grass. and things solely for our personal enjoyment, yours and mine, such as these wildflowers that have come back. We can have these and many more. The tragic fires remain a vivid memory. But wiser use of our resources in breaking up the vast, continuous fields of brush that surround us is needed to make California a safer, more pleasant place to live.